Um, let's do a simple problem involving Snell's Law, and maybe that will clarify uh, how to use this thing. So let's draw some rays. Uh, first of all, I'm going to draw normal to the surface. And let's say we have a ray coming in here. And let's grab a different color of ink. And let's say this angle, let's draw these so they stick out a little bit further. Let's say this angle is theta 1. The ray on the other side is going to make a different angle. And then the ray coming out of here is going to make yet a different angle. And I need to define my indices of refraction. So we'll call this in 1. Let's make this in 2. And we'll call this material also in 1. So we're going through a slab of some kind of material in 2. And let's say the slab is of thickness D. So we can do some math with this. So here's our normal. The first thing we want to calculate is the angle theta 2 here. Well, we know that in 1 sine theta 1 equal in 2 sine theta 2. And so if we want to calculate theta 2, we know that theta 2 is equal to in oops, let's give myself some room there. Uh, in 1 over in 2 sine theta 1. I'm just dividing by in 2 on both sides. But in order to get theta, I have to take the arc sine. So let's take the arc sine of all of that. And that gives us theta 2. Um, we know by simple geometry that since these sides of our slab are parallel, that angle theta 2 there is going to be theta 2 here. And I can calculate angle theta 3 simply by going in 2 sine theta 2 is equal to in 1 sine theta 3. And solving that, and I don't want to do this analytically anymore because uh, all of a sudden this is going to get a little bit difficult, I think. Um, but a sine of an arc sine should be a sine. So let's go ahead and try this. In 2 and the sine of an arc sine in 1 over in 2. Hey, look, things are starting to cancel out. Sine theta 1. Um, the in 2s are going to cancel out down there. And we know that's in 1 sine theta 3. And hey, theta 3 is equal to theta 1. If I did my math properly, which I did, because we know the angle of light doesn't vary as it goes to a slab. The angle stays the same. It just gets displaced by some amount. We have a vertical displacement. Let's call this vertical displacement h. And that's fairly easy to calculate, because we know this distance d here. We know the angle theta 2. And we know the tangent of theta 2 is equal to h over d. So h is equal to d tangent theta 2. And I can calculate that right away, no problem. So this is how you use geometry, a lot of trigonometry, to do calculations involving Snell's Law. And we'll do a lot of this in the remaining part of the course, but let's call it quits for today and uh, move on to some other basic properties of optics next time.